Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Tommy Grimes and I vlog about people, places, and things that I love from the city of brotherly love to the city of angels. Today I'm gonna to show you how to upload your raw DNA from either 23andMe or Ancestry DNA to my heritage DNA. Because one thing that I love is DNA testing. I've been using it to search for my late father's biological family and I'm currently working on a vlog slash maybe documentary about the journey. If you wanna learn more about that, I'm gonna throw a card up here which will link to a video that explains a little bit of the backstory um, and I'll also put links um, at the end screen as well. So here we go. First off, why would you wanna upload your raw DNA to another company? For me, it's because I'm looking for matches. Each additional database that I add myself to increases the pool of matches that I have and it also increases the chances that I'll find something. Ancestry DNA has a database of over 18 million while 23andMe has one that's over 12 million. Those are updated numbers that I got from the DNA Geek and they are now significantly larger than the numbers that I gave back in my 23andMe versus Ancestry DNA comparison vlog. They're always growing. I should probably make another updated version of that video, which I will do soon. Um, honestly, it's also interesting to compare the results that you have between the different companies. I'm most interested in finding out about my Jewish ancestry because I had no idea that my father was half Jewish. Initially, Ancestry had me at 38% Ashkenazi Jewish, while 23andMe had me at 34%. I also did family tree DNA, which had me at 41%. So I'm kind of interested to see what my heritage DNA will tell me. Are there any reasons not to do it? I can think of two off the top of my head. The first one would be cost. The more websites or companies that you use, you know, costs start to add up. Thankfully with my heritage DNA, it's actually cheaper to just upload your raw DNA than to take their kit. Um, they also run deals where it's completely free to upload your raw DNA. Uh, I'm assuming they do that because it helps grow their database and helps them maybe market other services that they have. The second reason would be because of privacy. I think it's entirely reasonable to not want to upload your personal DNA to these various companies, especially when ownership of the companies changes on a whim. Such is the case right now with Ancestry DNA which just had their majority stake purchased by an investment firm called Blackstone. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. But I get why it would make people feel uneasy. To download your raw DNA on Ancestry, you need to log in to your account and go to your DNA results summary page. Once there, you just need to click on the settings button, which takes you to your DNA settings for your profile. Scroll down to the section called Actions where it says Download Raw DNA Data and hit Download. Then just type in your password, click the little box and hit Confirm. Within a minute or so, you should get an email from Ancestry with a link to download your raw DNA file, which will probably come in the form of a text file. Over at 23andMe, you can log in and click on your name in the top right corner in the drop down menu, click Browse Raw Data. And on the next page, click Download. Then on the next page, <laughs> scroll down, agree to the terms and conditions by checking the box and hit Submit Request. Again, within a minute or so, you should get an email with a link which leads you to a page where you can click Download Raw Data and then you get another text file. It's as easy as that. Over at myheritage.com, you just need to create an account and once you're in, you can click on the DNA tab and in the drop down menu, click upload DNA data. On the next page, hit start, then choose mine, unless you're uploading for someone else, in which case you need to make sure that you have the rights to do so. Check all the boxes for the terms and conditions and then hit upload. Next in the finder window, choose which file you wanna upload and hit actually the word that says choose. I went with my Ancestry DNA results for the purposes of this video. It does this little DNA dance as it uploads the file and processes it. Uh, if it works, you get a little notice that says it was successful. It gives you a kit number and tells you that you should receive the results in five to seven days. 
Luckily, I got my results back the following day. When you log in, you get to see this DNA tab and it gives you a bunch of info, but it's not visible. So if you click on unlock, uh, you get to a page that tells you if you want to see the results, you either need to pay a one time fee of $29 or subscribe. Without getting into all of their subscription options, I just chose to do the one time fee. Now, if I would have listened to everyone out there that told me to do it when it was free, I wouldn't have had to pay. Uh, they do this one-time promotion, usually in December, and I guess they've actually done it over the last two years. Um, so if you don't want to pay, I would recommend hanging out till December and see if they do it again. Once I paid, I went back to the My DNA tab and voila, I can see my ethnicity estimates. They had me at 53.3% European, 29.8% Ashkenazi Jewish, and 16.9% East European. So that was definitely the lowest estimate I have for my Jewish ancestry. Boo! Now I had almost 19,000 DNA matches. Unfortunately, I didn't get any close matches from my father's side, which is what I was hoping to see. All in all, the website functions a lot like 23andMe and Ancestry DNA. You can see a map which colors over the various areas your ancestors are from. You can also see which countries your relatives lived in. Yes, the light changed because my camera overheated and I had to wait and now the sun's down. So there it is. I think it's definitely worth $29 if you're gonna pay it. I mean, considering the fact that their normal kit is like $79 and you never know. Uh, you could match with a close relative eventually after they take their test. Um, just because you don't match at first doesn't mean you won't eventually match with someone. What do you guys think? If you've taken multiple tests, which do you prefer? Where have you had the most luck finding relatives? Please let me know in the comments. There's also other websites that offer the ability to upload your raw DNA, like GED Match and also Family Tree DNA. Ancestry DNA and 23andMe, as of now, do not allow you to upload raw DNA data from other companies to their site. If you enjoyed this video, I would very much appreciate it if you went ahead and give it a like. Um, if you want to see more videos like this and follow me on my journey as I search for my dad's biological family, I would love it if you were to subscribe. Um, I have a couple more of these videos that are about DNA that I'm planning on making. I do apologize for not posting more frequently. Um, so I would recommend you hit the notify button to find out when I put more vlogs up. Um, I'm kind of, you know, planning out how I want to make this channel in the future. And I do want to make more review type vlogs um, in addition to just DNA testing. I also want to feature more of my friends who are out there doing amazing things in the world. And uh, I want to do vlogs about travel to places that I love. Uh, once it's possible to travel again. And then again, like I said, I want to tell that story about my search for my dad's biological family. Um, I've been mentioning how I'm working on like that story in the next video um, in that search. And it is definitely taking me a lot of time as I try and like actually sit down and write it and, you know, speak from the heart. Uh, that being said, I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy and I will be back as soon as I can with more vlogs. Until then, I will see you all again real soon.